What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we have found out that Banner Saga has competition. In today's episode we'll be checking out a game called Ash of God's Redemption. Which I think will be pretty sweet. If you've seen the Banner Saga or anything like it, you'll have a rough idea for what this is. An artistically pleasing strategy game. So let's go ahead and get started because we've only got 30 minutes to cover as much of this game as we can. So you can decide if it's something you want to put on your watch list. Uh, we'll go with slot number one right there. We can go with classic mode or we can go with story mode. So we've got recommended for all players, ultimate game experience, challenges, suffering, and hardship. Auto battle system, powerful characters, and additional resources lets you concentrate on the story. We don't want that. We want to suffer. I want to feel like I've made the wrong decision. Unsolved mysteries are like an unquenched thirst. Premonitions of trouble to spur you to keep going. and two years since divine retribution, the end of winter, the Vale of Mercy, foothills of the Milky Mountains. Seven hundred years ago, you and the other Kuros took to the field of the drowsy deep to prevent a great calamity, the reaping. Your self-sacrifice should have destroyed all the reapers once and for all. Nine years ago, you began feeling a growing sense of unease and decided to roam Terminum to find the reason. A month ago, you met a temple guard in the town of Gordon. There was something peculiar about him. Feeling a long-forgotten sense of dread, you realized it was an Umbra Reaper in disguise. He noticed you too, but chose not to pursue. He merely winked at you and bowed in jest. The return of the Umbra forewarns the impending reaping, so you head to the Milky Mountains to find the local Cirrus. You hope to learn the time and place of the coming reaping and prevent it. When you'd stepped onto the narrow path, you'd noticed several sets of footprints. At the time, you'd thought that other people seeking the serious advice must have anticipated you, but no. They're just robbers looking for an easy target. It's time to act. Blue tiles are where you can move on your turn. Orange represents extra moving distance. You need to spend energy in order to get there. All right, so I've got quick strike right there. And enemies standing on pulsating tiles or within reach can be attacked using the chosen skill to select a target. Click OK. Most attacks allow you to damage either the enemy's health or energy. Select health damage. Your character will close in to attack them. 
How's he gonna- I thought he was gonna like dive over there and do something epic. Like I was thinking like, have you ever played Guild Wars 2? I was thinking about like the Defender or the Guardian or whatever the Paladin character is. He's got an ability where he does like a side flip through the air and smacks him. Like I thought he was gonna do something like that and then he was like, no, I'm going to walk lazily over to you and then I'm going to end you. Like fair enough man, if you're that badass that you can do the whole Sith Lord thing, I don't care. Damaging the enemy's energy will reduce their option because faster movement and powerful skills require energy in order to execute them. Moreover, if the enemy has zero energy remaining, double damage is dealt to health instead of energy. The enemy has a lot of health, but only five points of energy. It makes sense to strip him so you can deal double damage. Click an enemy with the right mouse button to see a list of skills you can use against them. So I got quick strike right there and we'll attack his energy. I stab at your energy, sir! Take that! Rockstar be damned! No energy shall you have! Uh, you can select an enemy to learn more about their abilities. Click on the tile they're standing on with the left mouse button. Now that you've chosen them, you can see a list of their skills in the lower part of the screen. Okay, so he's got Axe Hurl. Blah, he's got a Hurl. And then he's got Berserk. Increases your walking distance by one and your defense by one. Okay, does not end your turn. You can choose to manually walk to your destination before using an attack to use. Click on an empty tile with the left mouse button and confirm your action. Okay, I guess I'll walk up. Why wouldn't I just kill him though? If you want to use a skill that doesn't require a target, right click the tile your character is standing on. You'll see a list of skills which do not require choosing a target first. So, circular hit. Okay, I guess I'll damage his energy. Oh, that guy got laid out. I like the smoothness of the animations though. There's a lot of frames in each of those animations and it makes the whole thing seem kind of flowy. I like it. I like it a lot. This game seems like it used the same engine or at least the same art generation source as the Banner Saga. Although that cutscene had a little bit of an Archer vibe to it too. I don't know. I don't know anything about anything, so what do I know? Uh, so if I wanted to go with you, and like, let's say that I wanted to quick strike him. Yeah, do it. That's going to use up some of my energy though. That's risky. Quick strike! Yeah. Oh, apparently I regenerated some energy or something, so he's going to use that. What did that do? It gave him a little shield. Does that like negate one of my attacks or something? You better stop throwing axes at me. Throwing things is very unkind. I'm gonna come get you. I'm gonna come get you. Let's see what that little armor thing does for him. I do like the way we get like a predictive analysis too where it tells us, oh, I guess the shield doesn't block anything. Maybe it just reduces the damage I deal? Not really sure. You're about to knock on the hut's door when it's suddenly flung open. A woman appears on the doorstep. Your heart leaps from your chest. She's the one you'd left behind when you went to fight in the battle for the Drowsy Deep. She's the one that you loved, Amma. In a detached manner. Blance, what took you so long? It's been 702 years. You managed to survive, and then 12 of our brethren perished. Did you go into hiding? Yeah, call me Hopper. I'm already used to my new name. I was called Blance back when we were together. I wasn't hiding in that battle, you know. I was wounded, pierced by arrows. That's why I didn't complete the task. Yeah, I've heard the legend of the twelve braid ones who cast an enchantment on themselves and turned into stone. They achieved their goal and now the land is free from the plague and the reaping. The price was too high though if you ask me. Why'd you come looking for me again? I wasn't searching for you, but the local Cirrus. There are signs. Bestias are leaving the forest of Datura. The Vandal Witch has been sighted on the woodland trails and I stumbled upon Atrak and Gordon myself. They've come back. Another reaping is nigh, perhaps. Hmm. Well, that's a foolish question, Hopper. I don't foretell the obvious. You might as well have asked whether winter will follow autumn. The reaping is coming, and you know it. All loose ends shall be tied. What do you mean by tied? One day the final reaping is going to come. The question is if there will be anything left in the world afterwards. Why would you care, though? Aren't you immortal? I'm the same as you, Emma. Even if we are both Umbra, we've long embraced the human way of life, and I care about Terminum's fate. To the Reaping, we're no more than specks of dust. This time, we don't have twelve comrades willing to sacrifice themselves. Among those still alive, some will succumb and become Reapers themselves. You really want to get involved? I need to stop the Reapings. It's my fault that they're happening again. You need to get off your pedestal. We're maggots, the lowliest servants lucky enough to be seated at the dining table. Are you looking for the forsaken gods of this land? I have a book that describes the life of one. Here, take a look. I had a good laugh reading all this nonsense. Thank you for the book. I've been searching high and low for similar records, but uh, still. When and where will the reaping begin? I need to be there. 
It's where I'm headed, I know it. The souls of the dead have tortured me with guilt for 700 years. You gotta help me. Give me the knife you keep in your bag. The kind our brethren sacrifice themselves with. Now give it to me and you'll get your answer. Pity. I really hope to use it. But I doubt anything else can kill a reaper. Here you go. Why do you want it? The reaping shall occur on the day of the vernal equinox, both in the north and the south, in the towns of Woden and Albius. I wouldn't waste time if I were you. Sadly, I don't have time to reach the north. Farewell. I hope our paths cross again, though you still haven't told me why you need the knife. I saw you kill me with this very knife, Hopper. So I hope our paths never cross again. Farewell. What does one need to meet old age in peace? Only to avoid a major disaster. Year 1002 since Divine Retribution. Burkana, the Kingdom of Odala, City of Albius. The Spring Equinox. Eighth year of peace since the last war. A retired captain of the guard and his daughter are strolling through the festival market. most bizarre. A woman in strange clothes is walking away from the town hall. Her beauty should be turning heads, but I seem to be the only one noticing her. Gleta, you daydreaming again? You nudge your daughter as you see Baron Trouble, the burgomaster of the town, approach you. Good day, Thorn. How are you, Gleta? I take it there is a reason you've been combing the market since dawn. Looking for a gift for Leaky? Yeah, how did you know? Albius isn't the biggest town around. There are too many captains of the Royal Guard here, and even fewer captains' wives. And only one of those wives celebrates her birthday on the day. And only one of those wives celebrates her birthday on the day of the spring equinox. Please, give her my birthday wishes. I will, Burgomaster, though you are most welcome to stop by and do it in person. As I understand, a Burgomaster, a master, a Burgermeister, or whatever they're called, it's like a sheriff, I think. That's like the sheriff of a town. He's like the lawman, essentially, or the guy that's in charge of all the deputies of the town watch or something like that. I I'm pretty sure. The Burgomaster is, easier, is eager to carry on, but one of the citizens calls his name. Trouble nods to you and tends to his business. Looking at the retreating Burgomaster... Stubborn old man, huh? He seems resilient. I've heard he's a distant relative of the king himself. The distance of the relation may be the secret to his longevity. Well, we got carried away and we're no closer to picking a gift for Leaky. Well, what are we going to give her? You give me a hint? What's your mother like? This is the dialogue window, so this choice will have far-reaching consequences. Oh, so the little ink and quill right there. Okay. Um, I don't think jewelry is a good gift. I personally, as a man with a wife, I don't think jewelry is a good gift, personally. That's just me. I don't think jewelry is a good gift. I think it's impersonal, and I think that jewelry does not show that you understand your spouse or the other person. It's a good gift to go for if you got, like, one day left before an important thing, and you just need to drop, like, money to make it seem like you care. But I always feel like you can do better than jewelry. That's me, personally. Like, if you know your wife or your girlfriend's, like, interests and the things she's into and the stuff she enjoys... Stuff like that, you should be able to get her a gift that's a lot more awesome. That's just me personally, though. Maybe maybe your girlfriend really likes jewelry. I don't know, but for me and my wife, my wife doesn't like jewelry. She likes personal gifts. Things that have to do with all the hobbies and stuff that she has. It makes birthdays and Christmas challenging. I'm not going to lie to you. you got to sit there and give it some thought. You'd be sitting around like Winnie the Pooh poking the side of your head trying to figure out what to get her. Uh, let's see. We could give her clothing. Let's head over to Patagang's stall. He's a cloth merchant. If we decide to buy jewelry, then we'll visit the little shop by the town hall. It's a pretty game, man. It really is a looker. What a gorgeous title. Like, I'm wondering if the writing is slightly translated, because sometimes it seems a tiny bit stilted with the way that they declare, like, sentences and stuff like that. But other than that, man, wow. 
It is a game to look at. So there's places we can go. There's Patagang Stall. He's one of the merchants trading in textiles and clothes. Or we can go to Rask's shop. Or I can go talk to Gleta. Let's talk to Gleta. Was there something you wanted to discuss? I know what mom really needs. Health. For her aching heart. Is there any way to improve her health? Magic? Divine intervention? I don't believe in magic. The gods, it seems, don't even help their own servants. Do you remember what their temple is called? The Temple of Divine Retribution. It'd be silly to expect any help from them. I wish we knew why they had to exact this retribution on your mother. Then we should content ourselves with what the marketplace has to offer. And I will win tomorrow's fencing tournament in her, off in her honor. You really think she'll take pleasure in watching her daughter hurl herself at another's blade, even if it is a practice sword? Um, maybe mom used to fence when we were younger. Maybe mom's a fighter. There's something sexy about a warrior woman, man. I could never understand that. They call the gods, she'd have to use her skill even once. Alright, let's go and buy something. Alright, well, let's go look at the textiles. You make your way to the cloth merchant and find the stall practically blocked from view by the portly figure of the money changer's wife. She's a quarrelsome woman and obviously unhappy about someone invading her space. The woman nods to you curtly, no longer showing frustration. She strides towards the town gates and disappears among the merchant stalls. Oh, nice to see you, Captain. What have you done, my friend? You just lost me a client. I swear, I was this close to taking the fortress. Uh, let's see here. Not every fortress is worth besieging. Your words ring true, my friend. However, since you've rid me of one client, perhaps you'd like to pick something for yourself? Yeah, Gleta brought me here. Let her pick. We're looking for a shawl or a handkerchief? The best that you have. You would not believe, Patagang, how happy I am to see my daughter looking at shawls and handkerchiefs, not choosing another blade or ancient parchment. Sometimes I think I've got two sons. Dad, I can hear you, and also, I don't think that history and fencing are not meant for girls. Mact has gone to the capital and become a baronet. I also want to be someone. Your brother's become a baronet, you say? That's wonderful news. Please, give my congratulations to your mother. I surely will. Actually, she's feeling a lot better today. Let's see here. Good cheer, turn to be- I don't want to do that because my daughter's standing right here. Like, my daughter can't make her happy, but my son can, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things, you gotta show diplomacy, man. You don't want favoritism in between your children, otherwise you end up with drama. Good cheer turned out to be more powerful than the healer's gimmicks. Have you heard of the lady healer from Ursus? Her talent's the talk of Burkana. Yeah, we've already visited the men here in Ursus. The healer wasn't at home at the time. They said that she and her daughter could be wandering elsewhere for years. I couldn't exactly sleep on her doorstep, you know. But enough of that. You said something about shawls. Let's choose one. What kind of fabric are you looking for? Radenan wool, Baldarian silk. Uh, let's have... So it's for a shawl? If you're trying to get a shawl, you should definitely go with wool. I, I don't feel like a silk shawl is going to do an amazing idea unless it's naturally hot here all the time and you're looking for something that breathes. Uh, show us the wool. Hey. Let me borrow a ring, my friend. The young one Gleta wears on her pinky there, and I shall spare you the small talk. Gleta takes the ring off her pinky and hands it to Patagang, who picks a fluffy woolen shawl from his counter and pulls it through the tiny ring in a blink of an eye. Hmm. Unbelievable. I didn't think it was possible, and yet, would this shawl be warm enough? This is precisely the reason why this fabric is so valuable, young lass. Being light and thin, it keeps you warm just like heavy wool cloth. Yeah, we'll take the wool shawl. She's sick, and so, you know, let's keep her warm. You unstring your purse and settle with Patagang. Then you neatly fold the wool shawl and pass it to Gleta. As you're about to leave, the low sound of a bell fills the marketplace. Startled, sellers and buyers alike stare in the direction of the town hall. If only you'd seen the pretty lady I spotted earlier. She was, uh... Almost as beautiful as your daughter. She went straight into the town hall. Could it be that her beauty drove our bell ringer crazy? Or he drank himself silly again. The bell ringer has outdone himself this time. He's not late. He started early. Doesn't the bell sound strange to you? It's almost like it's screaming. Suddenly, all around you, citizens start to collapse. You turn around, grab Gleta by the hand, and run towards the town hall together. Oh, we're going to have a battle. We're going to throw down. In a bitter battle, you are better than the batters.
You see Baron Trouble lying on the ground dying. Blood gushes from his mouth, his nose, his ears, and eyes. You're tough. You struggle to stay on your feet. Blood is gushing from your nose. Gleda, scared to death, is hiding behind your back. But rather taciturn. Who are you? No need for you to know. Use the last reserves of your energy to stay upright. Your heart is about to leap out of your chest. Your throat contracts. Dying already? Uh, I'm not begging anybody. I don't go out like that. I don't go out begging. If you're gonna kill me, you better kill me while looking me in my eye. I don't beg. Mm, stick that thing to the side of my head and do what you're gonna do. Let's get this over with. I'm gonna live longer. It seems the monster is grinning. It clenches its fist and your heart clenches in your chest. A moment later, the unbearable pain lifts. Towering over you, the monster examines you intently for a few seconds, then extends its arm and points at your pendant. It grabs the captain's insignia, clenching it in his fist. With a hissing sound, the strix and the pendant shrinks. The reaping will start with your family, Thorn Brennan. The monster vanishes into thin air. You shake your head, trying to clear it. Oh, blessed gods. Did you hear what it said about our family? Quick, we need to get home. What's up with that guy, man? Why is he always walking around shirtless being a dick? Like, why you gotta reap human beings, man? Why is that necessary? Couldn't you, I don't know, couldn't you have been like a dermatologist or something? There's other lines of work that are more honorable. You run headlong to your house, taking every possible shortcut. Even a small town like Albius has its dark corners, but you could not care less. Right now, you need to make sure that everything's alright at home. Gleda's outcry makes you stop in your tracks. Your daughter hastily pulls some colored plaques from under her belt. That's what almost burnt my stomach. Rass gave them to me about a week ago. A long time ago, there were supposedly magical battle cards, and then suddenly, they became hot to the touch. Uh, what do they look like? Ooh! There's like a deck building aspect of this game too? Ooh! Splatty likey! The magical plaques almost burn your fingers, but they also fit perfectly in your palm. You feel almost as if you could wave your hand and channel magic into any enemy. Go figure! Could they regain their power because of the reaping? How did Rass get them? You remember seeing such plaques sold as curiosities and souvenirs. You hear footsteps coming from somewhere ahead. Three thugs are, bar are barring the way. Their puffy faces are contorted with mindless rage. Did Highwaymen get so brazen as to attack townsfolk hoping for easy gain? In a swift move, you draw your sword, but the thugs look unimpressed. You look closer and notice their vacant eyes and foam at the mouths. Your opponents are either very drunk or crazy. You step in front of Gleta. I'll beat some sense into him. Stay back. In response, Gleta steps aside and draws her blade. Did I practice with a sword for all those years just to keep hiding behind you? Together, we'll deal with them faster. What your daughter is really asking for is some stern parenting, but the thugs attack you with a feral roar. You can only hope that your daughter is taking your lessons to heart. Alright, so we have more than one character. You can choose the turn order. Just select any character standing in a highlighted tile, and then choose an action to end their turn, and the title will dim. When all your characters end their turns, a new round begins. Okay. And then we also have cards. You can click on an icon to use a card. It has a number that it shows on the round that it becomes available. Each card can only be used once per battle. After you use it, it won't be available again until the next battle. Red skulls next to a character's portrait indicate the number of wounds they've sustained. The character's stats are lowered depending on the number of wounds. If a character has four wounds, they die. Oh, so we've got kind of like a... We've got like a fire emblem thing going on here when you play it on the hardcore mode or whatever where main characters can die and whatnot. Alright. So what do these guys do? So place my units before the start of the battle. We're going to corner up. Alright, I love that little animation right there. So many things in this game are done with such good, like, such solid amounts of care. So we got Furious Strike, deals 3 damage, and increases your attack by 1, deals 3 damage to health, and then reduces the attack of an enemy unit by 1. Okay, do they all have the same abilities? Sweeping Blow. Okay, so he's got an AoE. And then this guy over here, he's got Speed Up, he's got Attack. Alright. This guy's a little concerning. How much energy is that going to cost me? Too much? Alright, fall back to the corner. Can I change his facing? Or does that not matter? 
Oh, our turn has a timer on it. I'm not sure I like that very much for a strategy game. Um, so we've got anger, attack by one, and increases your defense by one. Yeah, go ahead and use it. Oh, really? It actually drains his health. Okay. That's probably good to know, but seeing as most of these guys don't have anything to attack me with right now, I'm going to wait for them to close up and waste some of their energy trying to get in the... Oh, really? Okay, never mind then. I was going to let them burn up some energy to try to do something. What does she have? Double strike, 18 to health and to energy. Reduce your attack by one. Ooh. She's got some nasty attacks. 27 health right there. Good lord. Yeah, bop that dude then. Go for it. Okay, but she deals damage to herself, but it looks like you get health back when you kill somebody. I don't know if that's 100% of the truth. So it's his turn. He's got fight back. So we've got 8 damage that pushes the enemy back by one tile and increases your counterattack. Deals 16 damage. So, uh, yeah, some of these have a cost. So that does 16 health to all surrounding units and pushes them back by 2. And then he's got anger. And he's got shelter. Okay, we'll just get up there, I guess. And we'll go ahead and we'll work on his energy. Yep, knock him on back a little bit. Let him think about it before he gets up on us. So that guy's going to close a little bit closer. Over here. So both of those cost health. That's risky right there. That's a risky proposition. So I want you to move to right there. Stay on that side because I don't want you inside the range of AoEs or anything else. And go ahead and work on his energy. Perfect. So there's a little bit of damage out, but I wasn't really worried about what he had for me because in general it didn't seem like he was super effective. And I could play with any character in any order. And so let's go ahead and finish him off. Cool. Those animations are so smooth. Oh my god, that animation, it's like watching Aeon Flux or something. Like, it looks so good. Ooh, he counterattacks. Ooh. Okay, I wasn't aware that he was going to counterattack. Uh, let's go ahead and we will... Deals 8 damage and increases your defense by... Yeah, go ahead and do that. There you go. Raise his defense ever so slightly. Oh, really? You can reduce their damage to nothing. Maybe that's flat damage mitigation, because I seem to recall his attack did 3 damage, and he's got 3 shields, so maybe it's flat damage mit. Seems plausible. Uh, go ahead and we'll, we'll whittle this guy down piece by piece here. God, it's so smooth. Whoever animated this really went ham on it. Oh, and really, it, it looks like it lasts for the rest of the turn, so if you know somebody's going to be tanking, you can... Oh, really, it pushes her back, too. Okay. Gleta looks at the bloody bodies in terror. This is the first time that she's fought to the death. You grab her by the shoulder, shaking her a couple times before she looks away from the corpses. Finally steals herself and meets your gaze and nods with determination. You are proud of your daughter, but even more so worried for your li wife, Licky. There's no time to lose. You need to get home as soon as possible. A couple of side alleys later, you open a familiar gate. Victory! And with that, we will end our episode on Ash of Gods. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here. If you like this episode, hit it with a like. It's the best way to help the channel out. If you wanted to go a little bit further, I do have a Patreon that you could check out. In addition, I'd love to hang out with you live at twitch.tv slash splattercatgaming every single day at 3 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time. So if you wanted to stop on in and say hi in person, I'd love to see you. If you wanted to get this game, i got a link for you down below, and I will see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. Hi to everybody.